Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem from NCERT's English textbook for class 12. The name of the book is Flamingo. We are going to take up the poem A Thing of Beauty. This poem is written by John Keats. We will now discuss the poem with every line, right? A thing of beauty. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. It gives us eternal happiness. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us on the earth? So how beautifully the poet is say, saying that every day would bring something happy for us. Spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days, there are days that are gloomy, that are sad of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways, something is sad, something bad has happened made for our searching yes in spite of all these some shape of beauty moves away the pall pall means the gloominess beauty helps us remove that sad days are there difficult days are there but our noble deeds our attitude towards these negative things will help us bring the change. Our negative thoughts can change into positive thoughts. From our dark spirits, such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are daffodils. With the green world they live in and clear rills now the poet is talking about beautiful things around us, trees, the sun, the moon, sheep, rills means those clear small streams, they bring happiness into our life, they bring a cheer on our faces, that for themselves a cooling covert make gainest the hot season, the mid forest break, those ferns that are you know there they give brightness, they bring about brightness. You see the poet Keats belongs to a country where the winters are very harsh. Therefore, hot season is a welcome over there. So, he is talking about that, that you know warmth, that beauty. Rich with sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and musk rose are blooming everywhere and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead, all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring onto us from the heaven's brink. So all our happiness, health, positive thoughts are coming from the beautiful things around us. Anything that is beautiful provides us an unending everlasting and eternal joy. It leaves an unforgettable impression on our heart and soul. It touches us from within. We love to relive the memories of joyous moments in our thoughts and conversations. You see, only the things outside are not beautiful. Things from within are also beautiful. A beautiful conversation between two people can leave an everlasting, beautiful, positive impression on us, isn't it? Do you agree with this or not? When you have something, you know, sad to share, you share it with your uh, friend or family members, you talk it out. That conversation changes the mood. You feel happy after that. The joy that we experience on seeing beautiful objects multiplies whenever we remember it. Similarly, 
the loveliness of anything beautiful multiplies each time we visualize it in our thoughts. Right? Our thoughts and dreams are very powerful. You see, if we are going through a sad phase or we are feeling little low, we you know remember those beautiful thoughts, those beautiful dreams, I think that gives us energy. Compared to this, things which do not give us happiness only remain for a short while. Remember, those phases are for a short while. They are passing moments, but a thing of beauty is a joy for ever and negativity should disappear forever. A thing, the memory of which provides us eternal joy will never fade away. Please remember this. This is a beautiful message for all of us to learn. Remember good things. Remember things that have given you success. Remember things that give you happiness. Remember those moments that you have shared with your family and you felt really happy. They are going to stay with you forever. The loveliness of a beautiful object does not fade away or die out because it leaves an indelible imprint on our heart and soul. Beautiful things give us peace. Yes, like restful sleep. And that is what the poet is also talking about. Sweet dreams and good health. And therefore, they refresh us. Now, I want you to discuss a few things with your friends or with your teacher. The poet has used the words wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth. What does this mean? Note down your points. We will have a discussion like this. Keats feels that every morning we weave a beautiful string of flowers or memories, right? We may not have flowers around us, but we have beautiful memories which help us support ourselves and motivate us to live our life to the fullest instead of burdening our lives with pain and suffering. My next question to you is, why is there an inhuman dearth of noble natures? So what does this line convey? In these days, there are few people who are noble in character and who rise above petty differences by being kind and generous. I think we all feel that. That is the general feeling. There is a dearth of such noble souls on our earth these days. I think this is a cause for concern. And if we all take a vow to be kind and noble to each other, I think we will be able to change the atmosphere of this earth. This will be a happy place for all of us to live. Man is selfish and self-centered these days. We are all running after our self-centered goals. They may not be our dreams. They may not be dreams for everybody. So that is the concern. It is a lesson to be learned. So next question for comprehension is, what are unhealthy and over darkened ways? The answer is, the unhealthy and over darkened ways refer to the trials and tribulations of life. We all face that. The selfish and jealous methods we adopt to achieve our goals. This is absolutely incorrect. We should be upright, we should be honest in our behavior and in our deeds. My next question is, spite of despondence. So what does this phrase mean? I think it means, despite the existence of gloom, and darkness around, we have to be positive. So next question for comprehension is, what images of beauty has the poet referred to? You can go back to your poem on page 98 and 99. Underline the, the uh, you know, things that the poet says are beautiful. And I think we also find those things beautiful. 
the poet appreciates the simplicity and serenity of beauty through the images of the sun, the moon, the trees, the sheep, the daffodils, the green pastures, the livid streams and a fair bloom of musk roses. I think all of us find these things beautiful. They were there at the time of Keats in 1818. They are with us even now in 2020. Only thing is that we have forgotten to appreciate these things around us. We have become materialistic. I think we should go back to these beautiful things, appreciate them. They should become part of our day to day appreciation. And then probably we will become a different person altogether. We'll start appreciating things which are which may think are mundane but have beauty inherent in them. Next comprehension question. How is tree a perfect example of a beautiful thing? The tree bears the heat of the sun to give shade and coolness, isn't it? To anyone who seeks shade and rest under its branches, its greatness is a degree greater because it, because it gives shade not only to the mighty ones but also to the simplest of the animals such as sheep. Next comprehension question is what does simple sheep symbolize here? Sheep and lamb are envisioned as symbols of innocence and serene beauty. Keats has made special reference to the sheep as symbol of divine beauty. I hope this is clear to you. When you read the poem again, you will gather the meaning better. The next question is explain the green world they live in. The beauty of nature is at its best in the lush green surroundings of meadows and pastures which provide support to all plants and animals. It is in this green world that all living creatures find true happiness and joy. What does Keat mean by an endless fountain of immortal drink? According to Keats, beauty is a constant source of motivation and inspiration. Yes, it is. Try it out. You see, if you are very sad, you look at a beautiful thing. Even, you know, looking out of your window and you see a squirrel you know, looking for food, climbing up the tree or a beautiful flower, your mood will change. Keats considers it an endless fountain from which mankind can drink the elixir of life. Next question, pouring on to us from the heaven's brink. God, Keats says, has showered beauty upon us from the heaven. Yes, God has showered that, but we are not recognizing it. It is the greatest gift to man, but we are destroying it, aren't we? We are cutting down the trees, we are cutting down the mountains, we don't let flowers bloom. This eternal and everlasting beauty is a perennial source of gaiety, happiness, which is eternal and everlasting. Now we come to the poetic devices. Which poetic device is used in the second line of the extract? Hyperbole, endless fountain. This is an example of hyperbole. Next, which lovely tales does the poet speak of? The motivational stories of martyrs such as the lovely tales that the poet speaks of. There are few more questions which are given at the end of the text. 
we will now discuss those questions. First one, list the things of beauty mentioned in the poem. We have already discussed it. Everything that nature offers is a thing of beauty and a source of pleasure. Some of them are the sun, the moon, old and young trees, daffodils, flowers, small streams with clear water, mass of ferns and, and the blooming musk roses. All of them are things of beauty. They are constant source of joy and pleasure. If you have not experienced, try it. You will find happiness. List the things that cause suffering and pain. There are many things that cause suffering and pain. Malice. We experience it almost every day. Why do we experience it? Because we have turned our nature in that manner that we have become selfish. I think we should introspect. We should reflect on our actions. We should leave that. We should, if we leave that, everything will be, become fine. And we are dis disappointed with that. And that is the biggest source of suffering. Another one is the lack of noble qualities. Our unhealthy and evil ways also give birth to so many troubles and sufferings. They dampen our spirits, they act as a pall of sadness onto our lives. Next question, what does the line therefore are we reading a flowery band to bind us to earth suggest to you? As we all know now that Keats is a lover of beauty. He employs his senses to discover beauty. The link of man with nature is eternal. The things of beauty are like reeds of beautiful flowers. We seem to weave a flowery band every day of good deeds, of our dreams or our, or our happy moments. It keeps us attached to the beauties of the earth. Next question is, what makes human beings love life in spite of troubles and sufferings? There are many things that bring us troubles and sufferings. They dampen our spirits. However, some shape of beauty brings love and happiness in our lives in spite of these unpleasant things. A thing of beauty removes the pall of sadness and suffering. It makes us love life. Next question, why is grandeur associated with the mighty dead? The mighty dead were very powerful, dominating persons during their own times. Yes, mighty soldiers, kings, their achievements made them mighty and great. They laid their lives for the sake of other people. Their noble works dazzle our eyes. We imagine that such mighty dead forefathers will attain more grandeur on the doomsday. Hence, grandeur is associated with the mighty dead. Next question. Do we experience things of beauty only for short moments or do they make a lasting impression on us? Now I want you to write this answer. I am giving you 30 seconds to write it. We have discussed the poem. We have discussed all the phrases that had come in the poem. Are you ready? Shall we discuss the answer? We feel happy by coming into contact with things of beauty. They make a lasting impression on us. Keats makes it clear. At the outset, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. It is a constant source of joy and pleasure. Its beauty never declines or diminishes. Its loveliness goes on increasing every moment. Its value remains undiminished. It never passes into nothingness. It removes the pall of sadness that covers our dark spirits. Next question. What image does the poet use to describe the beautiful bounty of the earth? What image 
has he used. John Keats uses a very beautiful image to describe the beautiful bounty of the earth. It is the endless fountain of immortal drink, endless fountain. See the beauty of the earth never ceases, only we sometimes are not able to appreciate that. It pours constantly into our hearts from heaven, thus the beautiful bounty of the earth is called an endless fountain of immortal drink. Now we have come to the writing section. Each one of us has a different concept of beauty. Yes, it does vary from person to person. I might find a flower beautiful, you may find something else beautiful. This may be in its physical form as a piece of art or the shape of a tree or in thoughts and ideas such kindness, hope, etc. Your experience may be different from your friends. Yes, it will be because our environment is different. I want you to write a letter to your friend recalling beautiful moments, scenes, sounds, even music can be beautiful, even songs can be beautiful, right? That you may have experienced. Now inquire about their experiences. You can also write a poem or weave a story around those beautiful moments. You can write a story, a narrative. You can even draw or create a collage of images from newspaper, magazines depicting those moments. With this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed listening to the poem. Now, I want you to read the poem on your own. I am sure you will be able to appreciate the poem on your own. Happy reading. Thank you.